Screw people who tell you that you need to lose weight in order to love yourself, and instead, tell yourself that because you love your body, you need to take care of it. Hi everyone, my name is Holly, and today's video is a bit of a personal one, as I'm going to be delving into all of the details on how I lost 60 pounds in a year. I will be, for the very first time, publicly sharing my actual weight, which is very scary for me, and the health-related book I read during it, which put me in a very positive mindset. Now, I didn't mention this book in wrap-ups or book review videos or anything because I knew I wanted to eventually film this video for you. I consistently get messages asking, how did I do it, what did I specifically change in my life to drop 60 pounds in a year? Especially from those of you who have been watching my videos for a very long time and noticed my weight change, my face getting slimmer in videos, my happiness becoming more apparent. And I did not want to just throw up a video without really gathering my honest feelings and gauging what info is important and safe enough to share with you guys. I know mentioning weight at all can be really triggering and I didn't want to make anyone uncomfortable, but this video is purely my experience, how I changed my life for the better. I am not an expert, I am not a doctor, not a nutritionist, not a dietitian. The only thing I know is what has been working for me. So I started my fitness journey July 1st, 2019, and up until summer 2020, I had lost 60 pounds and have maintained my weight since then. That was my experience, I guess, through the second half of 2020, to not weigh myself and not be in a calorie deficit because I don't want to live my life looking at the scale every week. And I really wanted to see if I had truly learned healthy habits. So after six months or so, on January 1st, 2021, I weighed myself, and I was the exact same weight. I am so proud of myself, and I feel knowledgeable enough to share my story, which brings in what I did learn from the book that I read. Being a fantasy reader, reading nonfiction sounds like the most boring thing in the world to me, but health and fitness is a huge part of my life now. It's so important to me, and as a book lover, it makes sense to broaden my horizons in that genre. Also, being a very critical reader, I read this book with heavy Heavy scrutiny. I did not want to be told you should only eat a thousand calories a day. I did not want to be told you have to do two hours of cardio seven days a week to be fit. You have to be on keto because girl, I eat pizza every single Wednesday and I eat carbs in general probably every day. I don't want a health book to tell me I should feel bad for where I was. I seriously reject the idea that I have to hate my body and hate myself because I was obese. Society thrives off of telling men and women that we should hate our own bodies, and I'm going to tell you right now, you are incredibly beautiful and handsome just the way you are, and we should look at health and fitness as a way to give ourselves self-love. Screw people who tell you that you need to lose weight in order to love yourself, and instead, tell yourself that because you love your body, you need to take care of it. And that's how I felt when I woke up July 1st, 2019. I woke up that morning and thought, I'm tired of this. I had just filmed a vlog around that time, and in it, Darren and I were jumping on a big bouncy pad, and I was filming Darren a lot. At one point, I handed the camera to Darren and said, film me for my video. Well, when I went to edit that video and saw myself, I felt so insecure that I edited out the clip of me jumping, but I did take a screenshot, which I look so happy and I want to mention because I was. We had so much fun, but I told myself a year from now, I'm going to look back at this photo and be proud. I was ready to put myself first and to love myself and invest time in my health. I was tired of my own excuses. I was tired of going to bed every night saying tomorrow is the day, tired of seeing all of these diets coming out and not being able to relate to any of them. I was the heaviest I had ever been at 213 pounds, and I'm only five foot, so that was incredibly unhealthy for my body. I want to reiterate that, my own body. And I felt like crap. I started my journey not knowing how to do it or how to lose the weight that I wanted to lose. Time is going to pass anyways, so why not make it count? Literally June 30th, 2019, I drank three cans of Mountain Dew. That was an everyday occurrence to me. And every weekend, I'd buy a 20-ounce bottle of Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper. July 1st, literally the next day, I cut pop out completely. Oh, sorry, the Ohio in me came out. I cut soda out, cold turkey, and I haven't had soda since. 
and I can't even imagine drinking it today, I'd probably die. And I did not view that as punishment. Cutting out soda was proof to me that I had the discipline and love for myself. Also, I'm not saying, oh, if you drink soda, you don't love yourself, because that's not true at all. Again, this was my feeling and my perspective for myself, so I replaced soda with flavored EAAs from Bomar Nutrition. I genuinely love this company so, so much and have far too many of their products now, a whole freaking shelf's worth. If anything positive came out of 2020, it's my love for Bomar Nutrition. This isn't sponsored by the way, but I am so so happy that they made me a Bomar athlete. Maybe because my purchases were too often. I have an affiliate code, it's not a coupon code unfortunately, but if you just so happen to decide to purchase from them, you can use my code every time you do and I get a 10% commission from your purchase, which supports me so so much. So my health drastically changed when I started using their protein in 2020. I cannot recommend their amazing flavors enough. My all-time fave is actually birthday cake, which I'm almost out of unfortunately. It's like to hear. That's really depressing. And you have to try the French toast. It is so so good. I use these in oatmeal every single morning. You can use them in coffee, hot chocolate, smoothies. Ugh, freaking perfection. They also have sample kits too if you just want to try a single serving. I did that when I first discovered them actually and the addiction started from there. So be very careful. Oh and I highly recommend their greens too which I drink as soon as I get up every single day every serving has 13 vegetables and fruits and it's such an easy way to get your daily greens in and my energy has drastically changed since I purchased a tub of this you know what let me know down in the comments if you want a video about all of the health and fitness related food and equipment that I use daily and has changed the game for me because I will absolutely do that for you so obviously I incorporated working out upped my protein intake, made sure I got my greens in, I stopped binge eating a whole bag of chips every night. I just gradually did these little things and I'm still changing things to this day. I made a spill. Already? <laughs> yes. My biggest tip is to try to associate having fun with working out. Exercise is not something to dread. I mean, it does take time. I feel like I'm finally in that mindset and I look forward to getting stronger. In fact, that's one thing I think I would change from what I focused on in the beginning. Much more strength training. My body tends to lose fat slowly, but I gain muscle quickly. And I'm not hating that at all. I've been following Chloe Ting's free workout programs every month and... I have ab lines for the very first time and I'm still in denial about it, so we're not even going to discuss that. Okay, on to the book that I read that put me in a really nice mindset, and that is The F*** It Diet. I actually recommend listening to the audiobook, which is a perfect way to digest self-help books, I feel like, as they can get dry sometimes. So this is all about diet culture and how dieting might work for you for a short period of time, but not long term. It brings in the idea of intuitive eating. It isn't a weight loss book because that is not what I wanted. I didn't want to be on a diet. I've actually learned to really not like that word, so when I read the title of this, I was like, hell yeah. This provides a very practical way to read your mind of the diet mentality. So what does that mean? Like, what did that look like for me? Oftentimes when I totally restrict myself of brownies, cookies, greasy foods, it would make me go crazy. And then I would binge eat them all a month later. The way it works in our minds is if you tell yourself you can never have ice cream again, you're always going to want that. You're always told that you're not allowed eating rice, no white bread, while well, I ate that consistently. The only food I cut out of my life is soda. It's all about being mindful, eat in moderation. Now this book is very honest and may be hard for some if you aren't ready to let go of what we think we know when it comes to body image and health. Also as the title suggests, there is a lot of profanity in this book. The author is very ruthless in her arguments against the patriarchy. The diet industry for good reason. She manages to tackle diet culture on both a individual and a society level. I found this to be engaging. It sends a great message that we need to be kinder to ourselves, to eat when we're hungry, to rest when we're tired. After reading this, I feel like my body and I trust each other now and that's beautiful. So there's a consistent quote that I tell myself if I found that I was giving an excuse to get off my butt and that is, if you want it, 
you'll do it. And I just do it. If I wanted a healthy life, that I needed to work out and eat healthy. And I tell myself, I can have it all, just not all at once. Keeping it simple is truly the best way to lose weight for me. I'm a person that does not like to get out of their comfort zone. I mean, I do. I push myself to. But honestly, if things could just stay the same forever and ever, I think I would be a very happy person because my personality and because of the way I am, my weight loss journey needed to be simple and straightforward. And that's how I lost 60 pounds in a year. I'm so thrilled with my progress and how things have turned out. This isn't necessarily a story of this is what you need to do in order to lose weight, but a story of I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just figuring out what works best for me and my lifestyle. I wanted to do my journey through self-love and self-discovery. I didn't want to lose weight and become obsessed with a scale or obsessed with how my body looks. Whenever I had a struggle, I viewed it as a challenge. And I saw challenges as part of my weight loss, not a one-way line down. Weight loss comes with ups and downs. It's part of the journey. If there was a day I felt like I messed up, you can just restart the next day. It's okay to start and restart as many times as you need. And I worked harder on me than I have ever worked on anything else. And I'm proud of that. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope it was insightful in some way. I know it's very different than the normal content I create, but this is a very big part of my life and I thought I should share it. So subscribe if you haven't. I upload videos every single week. Follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram at Holly Hearts Books and on Twitter at Holly Niece. And until we meet again, happy reading.